Welcome back to another episode of Cyberbytes, the podcast. I'm your host, Joseph Cooper, and today's guest, we have Suresh Batchu. He's a serial entrepreneur, the former CTO of Mobile Iron, and now the co-founder of Seraphic Security. In this episode, we dive into why the browser has become the new frontier of the enterprise attacks, how AI is shaping the threat landscape, and what it really takes to protect the modern endpoints. Enjoy the show. All right, and we're on. Introducing Suresh. Uh, co-founder at Seraphic Security. How are you, man? Very good, very good. Thanks yeah. for having us today. No, mate, my pleasure, my pleasure. How's the uh, the conference been for you so far? Fantastic. It's been so busy. You know, never had this many meetings in just two, three days. <laughs> well, you still look so fresh. <laughs> <laughs> What's the secret? A, <laughs> I took a good sleep last night. So. Yeah, 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 yeah. Great. Lots of water as well. Yeah. Where, uh, where are you based? I'm normally? based in the Bay Area. Ah, oh, see, so that's why. Yeah. You haven't got jet lag like myself then yeah. coming in from the UK. Uh, great. <laughs> no, no. Yeah, so what how's the, the conference been so far? It's great, great conversations. There's a lot of interest. And this space, the one we are in, browser mm. security, is evolving. And mm. there's a lot of interest. Yeah. We're having a lot of customer conversation, partner conversations. Very good. Brilliant. Very good. Well, first of all, congratulations on the uh, Series A funding. Uh, Thank was you. It 28, Thank 29 you. million. So. Yeah. Well, which one was it? 29 million. 29 million, yeah, yeah something like this. Um, so congratulations. Thank you. And uh, CrowdStack coming, coming in the round is great. It's fabulous. Fabulous. Great. So before we talk about Seraphic and what you guys are up to in the space, I'd love to get well, to give the audience a bit of an idea about who you are, your background, how you got into the industry. Yeah. I've been in the you know, cybersecurity and infrastructure space for almost two decades, uh, more than two decades, actually. And prior to this one, I did uh, Mobile Iron. I co-founded Mobile Iron and took it to public. It's in the mobile management and security space. Mm -hmm. So while I was doing there, uh, I actually also did a zero trust solution. Mm -hmm. And when I was working on that, I felt like it's still heavy. It's got to be some place simpler solution for the problem that we are solving. And uh, around the same time, you know, my co-founder, uh, you know, CTO, Avi, mm -hmm. he actually came up with a brilliant idea how to stop this. Uh, you know, attacks inside the browser. Mm. And that's how the Seraphic started. And uh, uh, Seraphic uh, is actually, is all about like, you know, like having that rich runtime context inside the browser. Mm. That is what you need today to stop these modern attacks. Mm. How and, many browsers uh, are there now? If you ask me on the mobile, there may be more than 100. Yeah. yeah. But when it comes to the desktop, the popular ones are like Chrome, yeah, you know, yeah. uh, Safari, uh, Edge. Those are the popular ones we see. But we see Firefox as well, yeah, yeah. and uh, you know Brave. You know there are a lot of browsers coming. Yeah, I've in. heard there's like 300 odd plus browsers potentially. And because of the way the Chromium engine has been built, the open source one, it yeah. is very easy to be, for people to take it and make it mm -hmm. into a browser. Yeah, right? and that's what. People are actually, some people are focusing on the security, some people are focusing on the privacy, some people like, you know, rewards. It's it's all over, yeah, yeah. the different browsers. Yeah, yeah, well, I'm seeing a lot about the space in general. Like, how big of a problem, let's talk about the problem space yeah. first. Um, like, how, how big of a problem is this? And I mean, the problem is very big. I mean, if you look at it these days, Everything that you do is through the browser, <laughs> right? It is not like, I mean, you think that you are using Slack, Teams, Notion, Asana, WhatsApp, mm -hmm. but they're all browsers behind mm -hmm. because they're all built on a framework called Electron, which is nothing but a Chromium engine behind. Mm -hmm. So the problem is very big. Mm -hmm. So if you look at it, all the applications, whether it's Salesforce, Workday, name it, they all have very good security on the server side, but they don't have any control on the endpoint. Yeah, completely. What's Seraphic then? Let's talk about Seraphic and uh, the, the, where did, when did you then decide to, to partner with the guys and the founding team to launch Seraphic? The company is uh, founded in 2020, <coughs> right? I joined a little late, mm -hmm. um, but uh, the company is founded based on the idea that like, you know, the, all, the, all the action is happening inside the browser and there was no solution in the market that actually preventing these modern attacks and our CTO, he had this brilliant idea how to prevent these zero-day exploits. Mm -hmm. Zero-day exploits is even Google cannot stop them. They have easily about 10 or so every year, the uh, exploits. And the way our technology came up with, we actually prevent completely those uh, wow. you know, exploits. So 
Okay. That is our foundation of where we started, Seraphic. Okay. And after that, after talking to customers, we built all the other things that yeah. customers are looking for. Tell us more about Seraphic then. Tell us more. Yeah, Seraphic is uh, uh, kind of, as, as when it comes to the solution, it is actually, you know, at the end of the day, it's a JavaScript code. It doesn't matter how we get injected in the into the browser. It can be injected and in, it can be in, done in different ways. Easiest one is actually through extension. And once we get inside the browser, we actually see everything that is happening inside the browser. And that's how we are able to kind of detect the attacks. We have a full runtime context. And based on that context, we can determine whether it is an attack or not, and then we stop this. Mm -hmm. I was actually uh, reading one of your articles on the website, and it was talking about uh, malicious like browser extensions and the rise in that. I couldn't quite believe that. Can you tell us a bit more about it? Yeah. So there actually happened some incidents also happened last year, where a regular proper you know um, browser extension has been hijacked by a hacker, and they put the malicious code inside, and that extension is supposed to actually secure the browser like kind of look at what's happening in the browser and then uh, secure it. But instead, it is actually start exfiltrating the data, mm. right? So um, another thing is these extensions over time, when you install it, it may look good, but over the time, they start like becoming bad and start yeah. to stealing the data. They have full, uh, full access to, depending on how the user is actually in the permissions, they have full access to the you know, data inside the browser. The one that is they're going after is actually session cookies, right? So what is happening in the in the last few years, the malware is actually going down. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, even if you re re read the reports, you'll see that. The reason is most of the data is sitting in the SaaS applications now, and attackers want to go and get that data, right? And to get to that SaaS applications, they need the identity. Mm -hmm. So that's what they're going after. Yeah. If they get your credentials, that's easy for them to go and get into the you know the SaaS application and steal the data from there. Mm -hmm. Right? Where would they go? It's not easy for them to actually directly go to the application and steal it. The best place to steal it is from the browser, mm -hmm. because after you authenticate, right, the session cookies are kept in the browser. Yeah. They're going for that, right? And these days, even all the identity providers, they all like, you know, they have this MFA, step up authentication, all that. But that's only at the authentication time to make sure it's you logging in. Mm. And once you log in, session cookies are kept in the browser <laughs> and the attackers are coming and taking that. Yeah, I've heard you in the past say that the, um, the browser is the new perimeter. Yeah. Yeah, talk to me about that. What do you mean? So if you look at it in the hybrid world, the network. Uh, perimeter is dissolved. Mm -hmm. There is no, like, you can't actually force people to go through your enterprise network and get to the applications. Mm -hmm. It's done, right? Then it's like the focus went into the endpoint. But if you look at the endpoint, it is primarily the browser, mm -hmm. right? That is the last hop for the users, like, you know, to the enterprise to, you know, kind of protect their data. Mm -hmm. So, browser is the place where if you don't protect enough, the data leak happens, or the attacks can happen, all the uh, you know, things I've been telling, mm. those, those you know, happens there. That's why the browser is your new perimeter, you want to secure it. What about with the, ri the rise with AI at the moment? Oh, so AI is actually, um, it's rising, and actually the, with the AI, the attackers are able to create very deep fake you know, uh, websites that you can tell if it is a phishing or not, right? Um, so it is actually becoming you know, harder and harder for these phishing you know, solutions to pre pre you know, detect and prevent them. And you need runtime context to protect those mm -hmm. uh, attacks, right? And that's one of the reasons this white is blacklist, those days are gone. Yeah. You can't actually you know, classify them and then say, you know, do it. You need rich content. Another thing that is also happening with, uh, you know, with the AI, like people are actually serving these malicious sites behind capture. All the, you know, these threat intel feeds that you get, they skip those captures because they can't go inside and see what's behind the capture. So they skip those, and 
that's what that's why he's saying mm -hmm. and it's actually increasing the fishing that is being served is increasing and they're you know serving behind capture where can you actually find it you have to be in the browser yeah. to find those attacks right so the way we do is actually we let the user go in you know into the website for us any website is the same mm -hmm. it's like we don't actually differentiate and we analyze every any every site we look at 200 plus data points in the page and then determine whether it's uh, you know malicious uh, site or regular site let's assume that we actually you know say that it's a malicious site we act we don't stop the user from like looking at the page the moment they're starting to put any input in the data that's when we have blocked the user mm, right? interesting so the approach we've taken to stop the phishing attacks is completely different than anyone else in the market. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it does seem there's a few like enterprise security browser solutions. You've obviously got some ones that we won't name. They're a bit bigger and further along, raising huge amounts of capital. Um, what's so unique about Seraphic? So, the uniqueness <coughs> of Seraphic is we are not a dedicated browser. Mm -hmm. We are not an extension-based solution. Mm -hmm. We are actually, our, all the intelligence is in the JavaScript agent that we actually have that gets embedded into the browser. It goes into the browser, sits on top of the JavaScript engine, looks at everything that's happening in the browser, and that's how we actually stop it. It's the same agent that goes into any browser. So we are browser agnostic and device agnostic. Mm -hmm. So that is the big difference from us and uh, the rest of the people. Yeah, great. Because of that architecture, we also can actually protect the one I talked about, Teams, Slack, Notion, yeah. all the modern applications that are built on Chromium, frame, um, the Electron framework. Yeah. We actually can protect those as well because our agent can go inside those. Yeah. Well, what trends are you seeing at the moment, particularly within, like, maybe uh, from a customer use case perspective? So, they're multiple, right? One of the things that definitely, you know, people are actually asking for extension management because there's, there's breaches happened. They want to protect their data mm -hmm. on these browsers. So it is actually on the race that we have a very comprehensive solution for extension management. That's one. The other one is how to stop data leaks into these AI sites. It's been a you know, common theme across all customers. Because of the AI, the employees are starting to put the data into this AI applications, and you know whether it's ChatGPT or uh, you know. I've heard some horror it. stories about yeah, this. Yeah, yeah. So that's another thing that they asking for. That kind of a DLP. Yeah. Right. And the phishing has always been on the top of their mind. Yeah. yeah. Or to stop uh, these modern attacks. Yeah. Over the next couple of years, uh, in the I guess short, short to medium term, how do you sort of think the the space is going to evolve? Yeah. So if you look at, you know, it started off with um, protecting that, you know, kind of uh, from the attacks. Mm -hmm. So we do kind of all sorts of security, you know, related, you know, attacks. Then slowly it is actually evolving into like protecting the data, like from the data leaks, mm -hmm. right? And also, it's also kind of making it, customers are looking for simpler solutions. If you look at VDI or VPN, they're heavy, right? And if most of your applications are web-based applications, why do I need to put those heavy infrastructure? So remote access directly from the browser. So it is kind of like evolving from a niche, uh, small thing into a platform. Mm, yeah. Becoming like, you know, I can add more and more. Yeah, yeah. particularly platform. And it's the right place to do it. Yeah, absolutely. With the conference floor, all I'm seeing everywhere is, is AI, agentic AI. Etc. Yeah, I've got to ask. Like, what was your your take on it? Opportunity, risk. What was your opportunity is great, and the risk is also very big. The reason is, at least in the you know human when your human is there and they can decide whether it is actually they want to click that you know particular button or not. Mm -hmm. And at least they will have some judgment there. When the agent in the AI, they're going to let's say they ask like go on you know. Uh, reserve a restaurant at 7 a.m. for the, you know on this day mm -hmm. it goes and searching all that stuff what if it actually goes to some malicious site and gets into that and whatever the data that is already there in the browser is exposed mm -hmm. right so 
it's a big risk. Uh, then they need to be put guard rails, yeah. right? How, which, where, how. So there is a great opportunity for us to actually secure those environments as well. Yeah, yeah. And I guess, what's the, uh, what does the future hold for the Seraphic? It's actually very, you know, we're very excited um, because if you look at it, all the modern applications that have been built, there is no solution in the market how to protect or you know protect the data in those applications, and Seraphic is in a right position to actually provide that solution to the customers. Customers are excited, right? And uh, you know it's a bright future. We actually see endpoint is the right place to actually protect the data and mm -hmm. protect from the attacks. Yeah, yeah, very exciting. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. I wish for the best of success. With um, just on the flip side of it, with the business success that you've had in the past. For, for the audience, um, what what advice would you potentially give to any founders that are thinking of they've got a startup idea or whatever they're thinking and they want to launch? What what advice would you have for them? For the founders, new founders. Yeah, for some new founders, yeah, considering yeah. you've been there, done it, got the t-shirt, <laughs> got the scars, got the yeah, hair. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I always actually tell people to kind of don't try to mimic something that's already been done go after something like uniquely you're solving something that you know uh, has a big impact to the you know to the customers and uh, don't worry you don't have to actually have the solution for everything you know start and automatically customers will help you take you mm -hmm. into the right direction right. speaking of customers how important is customer obsession it is so important right because you know, if you do well with the customers, they are the one who is going to tell the other customers as well, right? So the customer success is so important. This is one of the things that we focused at my previous company, Mobileye. We had close to you know, 20,000 customers. Mm -hmm. We are so obsessed in terms of helping them, and that actually may not pay off big time. Yeah. So it is very important too, because every customer understands that you will have problems because it's software. But how you deal with that, mm. how you actually respond, how you stay with them is very important. Yeah, yeah. Right. love that. Well, I guess what was one of the potentially biggest lessons that you might have learned at your previous business um, that you can that you can talk about? <laughs> it's I learned a lot. I'm trying to yeah. You, know, you could probably out. write a book, brother. Probably right. <laughs> you probably could write a book could if write you wanted books. to. Yeah, yeah. It definitely. But uh, um, one advice for sometimes founders think only from the product view. Oh, yeah, right? very interesting. And I'll actually tell them, no, no, product is only part of it. You need to look at it holistically mm -hmm. and see from, most importantly, you need to see from the customer's point of view, mm -hmm. right? Whatever that you think is like, you may think, you may think it is right, but when you start talking to customers, they will tell you what is exactly what they need. Mm -hmm. So there's a big difference between what you think from what they need, mm -hmm. right? So they need to look at holistically. Yeah. Right? yeah. Don't get don't get stuck inside the you know you know product only and you know inside and building the product. Go out, yeah. talk. You know you learn a lot. Once you've had the uh, the success with Seraphic. I'm going to hold you to write in that book on, uh, <laughs> on the lessons learned because sure, I think sure. there would be yeah. some really interesting yeah. material that I'll you use could... AI to write the book. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Suresh, I wish you all the best of success. Thank you so much. Seraphic, thank and you uh, so thank much. you so much for coming in and taking some time off the conference floor thank and you. coming to. My pleasure. Yeah, it's been brilliant. Thank you so thank much. Thank you so much. Thank you for listening. If you've enjoyed today's show, please like and share with your friends and colleagues as this is really important for the show's reach. If you'd like to be our next guest or are interested in Aspiron Search's staffing solutions, please get in touch directly with me or reach out to us via our website, www.aspironsearch.com.